So anyway, those were the two possibilities. You always, always can transfer money to a D4C or buy an annuity. Uh, and the next day, if you brought your money below $2,000, you can qualify for Mass Health. Next slide. What about if you're Paul? <clears throat> Remember, in Paul's case, he had more money. He had $250,000 because he had saved up more. He had a little more in income, $2,500. Oh, by the way, the reason why I mentioned the income figure. If you qualify for Mass Health, always your income still goes to the nursing home. So in the examples that I've given, once Peter or Paul go on the, the Mass Health rate, if the Mass Health rate is $4,000 in, in, uh, in, in uh, Paul's case, because he's only kind of sick, uh, it's $4,751. And if his income is $2,500, the amount that has to come out of his savings, right? is only the difference between those two numbers, or about $2,200 a month. A very small number compared to, remember, the private pay rate is $12,000 a month. So the burn rate on Paul's money, if he were on private pay, is the difference between $12,000 and $2,500, or, or $9,500 a month. So the, when I say the burn rate, the rate at which he has to exhaust his savings. So in Paul's case, his money if he's on mass health, is shrinking at a very small rate. So let's see what happens in Paul's case. If he, it, and by the way, that's the difference. So just the basic rate comparison. In Paul's case, after a year, um, with his $250,000, he'd be down with less than 150. Previous slide. Oh, I see. You were just yeah. showing the numbers. Yeah. By the way, as, as anybody who's dealt with me, you really quickly come to realize, I'm just a talking head. Brenda is the brains of this operation. So I always tell people, if you have any really complicated questions, just talk to Brent, right? And she's on the island a lot, so you can always talk to her. So um, at the mass health rate, at the end of the day, his money would be below 150000 As a matter of fact, the exact number is, right, that after a year, if Paul had died, on private pay, he would have had $136,000 left. If he had been on mass health, he would have had $222,000 left. Now, comparing what would have happened now. Next slide. So... If he were trying to maximize the amount he was saving by avoiding the D4C, he would put all of his money into an annuity. The problem in this case is that he has so much money that by buying an annuity, he ends up having more money than the mass health cost for the room. And remember I said right at the beginning that in order to qualify for mass health, you have to have less than $2,000 and you have to have income that is less than the mass health rate for the room. So in this case, if, if Paul had bought that annuity, there were 83 payments in the annuity. This would have been for his life expectancy. Um, the annuity with $250,000, if he used all the money, the annuity would pay him $3,012 per month. His regular income is $2,500, which would give him too much money. He'd have income of $5,500. Remember the mass health rate for his room, because he's only kind of sick, is only $4,700. So he'd be over by $761. Now, if he wanted to hit it right on the nose in terms of his being able to maximize his savings, he would do this. He would buy an annuity um, of $186,816. Because as it happens, that annuity over his life expectancy would pay exactly the difference between his regular income and the mass health rate. It would pay $2,251, and so, the, so he would have income of exactly $4,751 per month, which is the mass health rate, which means that over Paul's life, there is no mass health lien that is accumulating. There's no amount that's going to be owed to mass health when he dies, because while he's on mass health, he's paying the nursing home all out of his own money. So in this situation, he would have taken 
the, that annuity, taken all of his remaining money, because remember he started off with $250,000, and I'm seeing people looking at me going, geez, there's a lot of math here, I know. and it's true, and that's why you've got the books, and that's why I'm kind of going slowly, and I'll have plenty of time for questions, but the main concept is to just to see how the math works, just to get the concept of how the math works. So, if he had taken, if he had bought that annuity, which gave him exactly the right amount to make sure that there's no mass health lien that's piling up, and then took the rest of the money and put it into the D4C, that's the amount that was the rest, sixty-three thousand dollars. Because remember, he started off with two fifty, he took one hundred eighty-six and put it one place, and took sixty-three and put it the other place. So now we know that there's no lien that's accumulating. We know that as long as Paul lives. There's a significant pile of money, $63,000, to take care of all of his supplementary needs. You can buy a lot of lobster with $63,000. You can buy DVDs. You can do anything you want. You can go on trip. By the way, really, the D4C will pay for anything. If you're still physically able to get out of the nursing home, they'll pay for the trip. If you want to go on a vacation, they'll pay for the trip. They'll pay for an escort. They'll pay for the meal that you have. If you decide you're going to go to the Black Dog for lunch, they'll pay the whole thing. The D4Cs are really wonderful. So, this, he would have a pool of money, and he would, ha he would be accumulating no mass health lien. If, if, at the end of the one year that he lived, he had not used any of his D4C money, this is how the math works. On private pay, he would have had 136000 left. On the D4C, 160000 And if he had used that combination that we just talked about of, of the D4C plus the annuity, he would have had two hundred seven thousand out of his two hundred fifty thousand dollars left at the end of that year, and once again, the reason is his because the the, the difference between his, what he has as income and the mass health rate, if you're kind of sick, is so small, the pile of money was shrinking by a very very small rate. So that's what would have happened to Paul. With those two cases in mind, let's go back to Mary. Remember Mary? There she is. So she's got a house, she's got an IRA, so what is she going to do? Well, first, next slide. And this is the fine print that you can't see on the screen, so you have to read this slide. Um, she's going to sell the house. Now, she could also qualify for MassHealth while keeping the house, except that MassHealth is going to tell her that she has to sell it, she has to put it on the market, and if anybody offers her at least two-thirds of the fair market value of the house, she has to sell it to them. Why is that? It's because there had been a regulation for years and years that said, if you were on mass health, once again, if her husband were still alive, the house wouldn't be countable and wouldn't have to be sold. But if she's the only one in that house, and she's now in the nursing home, but then the house has to be sold. That's what the regulation always said. And it also said you have to put it up for sale, you have to list it with the broker, you have to do all these things which people would do, <clears throat> but of course they wouldn't really, the kids, this was always the kids of course, because Mom, Mary was in the nursing home, they would put it on the market, but they wouldn't really sell the house, right? So it was a $300,000 house and they put it on the market for like $500,000. And you know, they'd get no offers, <laughs> basically enough. And so at the end of nine months or a year, the Mass Health would say, how are you doing? And they'd say, oh, I haven't sold that house yet, you know, and it would just kind of keep going. And so finally, Mass Health decided they were going to crack down on this. And so about three years ago, they, they you, you know, the, the words that are in the slide talk about the good faith efforts that you have to make to sell a house. And that's what I was just describing. So about three years ago, they added this sentence. An offer to buy real estate, that is Mary's real estate, uh, is considered reasonable, and a reasonable offer has to be accepted. Uh, if it is at least two-thirds of the fair market value, unless the individual proves otherwise, to the Mass Health Agency's satisfaction. So unless Mary challenges it, if somebody offers her two-thirds of the fair market value of her house, she has to take it. So in other words, if you're one of Mary's kids, and she has qualified for Mass Health because she has a house, so she's allowed to qualify, but then she has to put it on the market, and the next day you buy her house, for two-thirds of its fair market value, you offer to buy it. She has to agree, right? Which is a very handy planning tool for a lot of people because it allows you to get the house out for two-thirds of fair market value. So, next slide. So, if Mary sells her house, say to her kids, it's a $300,000 house, she's going to sell it for $200,000. So she's going to have that two hundred. dollars Assume that she's going to have to pay some money on the IRA, that she's going to have to pay some taxes, 
assume that she's going to have to pay a penalty or some other stuff, so that we're saying that the IRA turns into 90% of its value, or 135. The annuity turns to 90% of its value, or 90,000. The bank account stays the same. So we're assuming in this case that Mary has $500,000 that she needs to spend, which means she's going to be on private pay for a long time. Um, but remember now, she's got two tools to apply for mass health. Now, if, if, the, if that were Mary's situation, at the end of a year, once again, if she were on private pay, she would have, oh, a little over $350,000 left. If she were on mass health out of her $500,000, she'd have about $550,000 left. Next slide. So what she would do with all of this money, because there is no limit to the amount of money that you can put into the D4C or that you can buy the annuity with, except remember in the annuity situation, you can't end up with too much income. In Mary's situation, she would buy an annuity. Um, she was, once again, she's 82. Um, with, with, with three, and remember, Mary's situation was, she was sick. She wasn't just kind of sick. So her private pay rate was higher. Right? Um, so Mary would buy an annuity uh, and use $371,000 of her money to buy that annuity. Uh, and she had, and remember, in Mary's situation, she had lower, lower income than Paul did, so she had a bigger gap to fill, which meant that she could buy a bigger annuity. So she'd buy an annuity that would pay $3,751 per month, which, together with her income, would exactly equal the mass health rate. So, so from the time Mary qualified for mass health, There'd be no lien accumulating against her assets after she died because the nursing home is being paid exactly what the nursing home is entitled to, that, $4,751 per month. She'd take all the rest of the money and she'd put it into the D4C. That, in this case, is $128,000. Let's see what happens in Mary's situation if she dies after a year. If she had been on private pay, then after a year, she'd have about $368,000 left. If she bought, if she did nothing but buy the D4C, she'd actually have less money. Because at the end of that year, remember, the D4C keeps 25% of all the money. In this case, if she put all the money in the D4C, that's a lot of money. 25% of, uh, of uh, $500,000, that's a significant amount of money. So if she had to, if she were, if she were doing that, she'd be left with only three hundred twenty-nine thousand. If, on the other hand, she had bought the D4C, she had done the, the annuity to get to the exact correct amount, and we just talked about what that amount was, and then put the rest in the D4C. At the end of that one year, she still would have had four hundred twenty-two thousand dollars out of the five hundred thousand that she started with. That's after a year. Let's see what happens with Mary using the best situation after five years. That's what happens. After five years, Mary would have Mary in this situation would have run out of money um, uh, some point at the end of year some point during year three. At the end of year five, next slide. Um, if she'd been on private pay, she would have been at zero a long time ago. Uh, if she'd done nothing but the D4C, at the end of five years, she would have one hundred forty-nine thousand dollars left. If she had done that combination of buying an annuity so as to keep that lien from growing and putting money in the D4C, she would have had about half of her money still left, $242,000. So, the moral of the story, the goal of all planning is to sleep well at night. So, for a lot of people, who, many people are very, very uncomfortable about doing long-term planning, losing control of their assets, waiting the five years. If you don't do that, though, and you're stuck in a nursing home, there is a price. Remember, in all of these cases, Peter, Paul, or Mary, they ended up paying a significant amount of money to the nursing home. All that I'm telling you is that in that situation, you don't have to pay all of the money to the nursing home. You can save a significant amount of it by just using these two vehicles, uh, uh, which most people don't know about, either buying an annuity or transferring money into a D4C, or both. That's it. Questions?